Greetings, and welcome to the training on position responsibilities and expectations as part of the new member orientation e-module training. By the end of this training, you will understand the responsibility and expectations of the intensive community orientation AmeriCorps member position. In following along on your member onboarding checklist, you will initial next to the following training topics upon the conclusion of this training. AmeriCorps identity, position responsibility and expectations, prohibited activities. You will receive a signed and dated statement stating you participated in these training topics. This statement must be printed and included with your member onboarding checklist in your member file. You will only receive this statement if you demonstrate that you gain knowledge from this training and understand each training topic outlined. If you do not demonstrate knowledge gained, you will be asked to rewatch this training recording and retake the accompanying quiz. The CWS Refugee AmeriCorps Initiative mission is to support a resettlement environment that promotes refugee integration by enhancing mutual understanding between refugees and their new U.S. communities through Intensive Community Orientation, or ICO. As a Refugee AmeriCorps member, you will be working towards this mission every day. Each of you will be offering Intensive Community Orientation, or ICO, to newly arrived refugees in the areas of housing, health, and or employment. Some of you are placed at operating sites who have decided to do all three of these focus areas, while others are at sites that have decided to focus only on one. As a Refugee AmeriCorps member, you must be working towards the Refugee AmeriCorps mission on a day-to-day -day basis. You'll do this by fulfilling the duties as outlined in your specific job description. Members should not, only be, should not be doing ongoing job duties that do not relate back to their specific job description. If you are found to be doing job duties not specific to, to your position, your service hours can be affected. AmeriCorps members are not just regular full-time employees and shouldn't be assigned general administrative work. You've been placed at your operating site to perform specific duties and should be performing those duties. If you ever feel you are doing duties outside of your job description, reach out to the Refugee AmeriCorps Program Specialist so that we may evaluate the activity and determine if it's in line with the program. While your supervisor has been trained on your duties, you as a member are also responsible to ensure you are doing duties that align with the program. If you are not, your service hours, again, can be affected. As a Refugee AmeriCorps member, you follow the service requirements set forth by CNCS and CWS. These requirements are found in resources available to you through the Refugee AmeriCorps folder located on the CWS OneDrive. Members should spend time reviewing the contents of the documents found in this folder to ensure compliance with program regulations. While this training will touch on the main service requirements, it does not diminish your responsibility for knowledge of and following all Refugee AmeriCorps initiative requirements. There are many documents available to assist you in understanding your service requirements, but two of the most important documents are the Member Service Agreement and the Member Toolkit. The Member Service Agreement outlines the terms and conditions of service with, C with the CWS Refugee AmeriCorps Initiative and is a binding legal document. You, will, you are required to sign and date this document and follow the MSA. Violations in the MSA can result in termination from the initiative. At any time, CNCS, CWS, and you as a member may alter the terms of the Member Service Agreement, but must do so through a written amendment. The Member Toolkit, the Refugee AmeriCorps Member Toolkit, excuse me, is updated regularly and provides further guidance on regulations of the program. Any updates that is made to the Refugee AmeriCorps Member or the Refugee AmeriCorps Member Toolkit will be sent out to both supervisors and members via email. This document is updated regularly and it may change, so make sure to frequently reference the Refugee AmeriCorps Member Toolkit for guidance on program policies and procedures. Furthermore, your service is vital to the community. CWX, CWS expects you to fulfill your contract as outlined in the Member Service Agreement. Termination from the Refugee AmeriCorps Initiative for non-compelling reasons is viewed very negatively. 
By committing to the Refugee AmeriCorps initiative, CWS HQ and your local site is also making a commitment to you. We are devoted to ensuring you have the tools and resources to thrive in your perspective, respective positions. As a Refugee AmeriCorps member, you are required to serve 1,700 hours over the course of the next year. You must serve at minimum for 11 and a half months, 351 days, but no more than 12 months, 365 days. This means that if you complete 1,700 hours before 351 days, you will continue to serve until and through the 351st day. This also means that you must complete 1,700 hours within 365 days of service. If you are short on hours, even by one hour, by the close of business on your 365th day, you will not have completed service satisfactorily. This means you would not receive any end-of-term benefit. There is no exception to this rule unless you apply and receive a compelling reason for an extension of service. As a Refugee AmeriCorps member, you are required, in addition to tracking the, the amount of hours you serve every week, you are also required to track the type of service hours that you serve. Service hours are cataloged in three categories. Service activity hours, training and education activities, and fundraising activities. Service activity hours are defined as the day-to-day -day work that is devoted towards reaching your goals as outlined in your specific job description. The majority of your hours will, be, will fall in this category once you complete your, your onboarding at your local site. Training and education activity hours. As defined by federal regulations, all AmeriCorps members must track the hours that they spend on training and education activities. You are required to track the amount of hours that you devote towards training and or educational activities that further your personal growth, professional growth, and or assist you in reaching the goals of the AmeriCorps position. Examples of training and education hours include onboarding trainings, webinars, professional development trainings, conferences, community of practice calls, and so forth. The final category is fundraising activities. As per federal regulations, members must track the number of hours that they devote towards fundraising activities. Fundraising activities include seeking donations, writing a grant proposal, securing financial resources from the community, and seeking donations from alumni of the program for specific service projects being performed by current members. When it comes to fundraising activities, Refugee AmeriCorps members may not raise funds for living allowances or for an organization's general as opposed to project operating expense or endowment. Furthermore, members cannot write a grant application to the Corporation for National and Community Service and or any other federal agency. There are restrictions on, the, on these types of service hours. First, service activity hours. As previously mentioned in the overview of your position, you should be constantly and consistently working towards the duties as outlined in your specific job description. You should not be doing duties that are outside of this job description. And if, if you are, it is highly possible that you could lose those service hours. In regards to training and education activity hours, the Refugee AmeriCorps initiative can only have 20% of its total member hours devoted to education and training activities. If the program retains all of its members, each member can devote 340 hours or 20% of, of his or her total hours towards education and training activities. However, if any member leaves the program early, the remaining members' education and training activity hours will be affected. 
The Refugee AmeriCorps program specialists will keep members informed of, tra of the training hours available and, depending on program ride retention, may require remaining members to receive approval from the Refugee AmeriCorps program specialists for any hours to be devoted to training and activity, education activities. And lastly, fundraising activities. Similar to training and educational activities, there is a cap on the amount of hours that you can devote to fundraising activities. However, it's not the total aggregated number of hours. Each member can devote 170 hours or 10% of their total 1,700 hours towards fundraising and training, towards fundraising activities. However, due to the nature of this program, it is requested that members and operating sites consult with the Refugee AmeriCorps program specialists regarding any hours to be devoted to fundraising and training activities before the member catalogs these hours. As a Refugee AmeriCorps member, you are responsible for accurately reporting on your type of service hours. And failure, failure to do so can not only affect the receipt of the end of term benefits, but also your living stipend. You must track your service hours correctly and falsifying any service log hours can result in termination from the Refugee AmeriCorps initiative and or repayment of any living allowance dispersed. Refugee AmeriCorps members will track their service hours via the service log workbook, which is found on the Refugee AmeriCorps OneDrive folder. You will submit your service log to CWSHQ and the Refugee AmeriCorps program specialist on a monthly basis. All Refugee AmeriCorps members will receive further training on how to review and complete their service log in their individual one-on-one -on -one call with a Refugee AmeriCorps program specialist. In addition to tracking the types of service hours, Refugee AmeriCorps members are also responsible for tracking their, tracking their outcomes and outputs as it relates to their specific job description. You will be responsible for submitting two reports to CWSHQ on a monthly basis, Outcomes Reporting Workbook and the Refugee AmeriCorps Monthly Online Survey. These reports will be due at the same time as your service log. It is imperative that members submit on-time, accurate, and complete monthly reports to CWSHQ. Without these reports, we cannot evaluate or show the impact of your work, which is vital to continued funding for the Refugee AmeriCorps initiative. Members will receive further training in the new member orientation e-module on how and why we report and what type of information we are looking for when you do report. CWS and the local operating site are committed to providing members with opportunities to develop both personally and professionally. Within 30 days of your start of service, you will complete a member service plan in conjunction with your supervisor to identify external career development opportunities that you will participate during the service year. The purpose of the member service plan is to identify um, professional development opportunities that we can all work towards providing you throughout the throughout the term of service. Furthermore, operating sites are required to conduct mid-year and end-of-the-year evaluations of the member. Let's take a look at this a little more closely. Performance evaluations provide an opportunity for members and supervisors to touch base about work performed the member service plan, and to monitor member activities. It is a program requirement that you and your supervisor conduct two performance evaluations during the, over the course of the next year, as well as the member service plan. Your supervisor may request additional evaluations as they deem necessary. A midterm evaluation must be completed halfway through your term of service and serves as an important opportunity to identify areas for continued growth or improvement in the second half of the service term. An exit evaluation will be completed at the close of service. Whoops, my apologies on the screen. An exit evaluation will be completed at the close of service. Supervisors must complete the exit evaluation one week before the AmeriCorps member completes their term of service. Even though it is at the end of your service, the exit evaluation is an important opportunity for supervisors to identify your strengths and weaknesses, areas of growth, 
lessons that you can take to your next uh, educational or professional endeavor. Likewise, your feedback provided to the local site can be incorporated to improve the services, service experience for future AmeriCorps members. It is important to note that if you want to do additional terms of service, you must have satisfactorily completed your current term of service. If you are given a bad review by your supervisor or CWSHQ, it could affect your ability to serve in another AmeriCorps program. In addition to exit evaluations, members will also have to complete an exit survey in the myamericorps.gov portal, as well as through a CS CWS HQ survey at the end of their service. These exit surveys are mandatory. You must also participate in quarterly check-in calls with the Refugee AmeriCorps program specialists. She will reach out to you and notify you when your next quarterly call is approaching. These calls are mandatory and you will be required to participate in four throughout your service term. Additional check-in calls can be requested by either the Refugee AmeriCorps Program Specialist or you as needed. The introductory call that you have with the Refugee AmeriCorps Program Specialist during your first 30 days counts towards your first quarterly call. In addition to quarterly check-in calls, you must also participate in the Community of Practice or COP calls. The purpose of COP calls is to share resources, best practices, and ideas with each other. It is also an opportunity to build a strong program and support each other in our work. Each member will be required to lead at least one COP call during their year of service. The Refugee AmeriCorps Initiative, as previously mentioned, is an AmeriCorps program, and as such, members must use the AmeriCorps logo and branding. On a daily basis, you are required to wear at minimum your AmeriCorps lan lanyard and or pin. You are supplied with this gear via a welcome package along with a $25 gift card to National Service Gear to purchase additional AmeriCorps branded items. Furthermore, when you are in the community or at a community event, you must wear AmeriCorps branded items and announce you're an AmeriCorps member, especially when providing and or conducting ICO with community partners. Publications created by, mem by yourself must contain the appropriate AmeriCorps logo. The correct logo is found in the Refugee AmeriCorps OneDrive folder, and the following acknowledge there is an acknowledgement and disclaimer that you must include on any external report or publication of material based upon the work of the Refugee AmeriCorps member. This disclaimer and acknowledgement can be found in the member toolkit. You may not alter the AmeriCorps logo and must obtain written permission from CNCS before using the AmeriCorps name or logo on materials that will be sold or materials that permit donors to use the AmeriCorps name or logo in connection with any activity prohibited by statute, regulation, or CNCS terms and conditions. Again, to emphasize, all members at all times must wear, at minimum, his AmeriCorps lanyard and or pin. If you purchase a shirt or something else through National Service Gear that has the AmeriCorps logo as you see on your screen, that is also sufficient to meet this requirement. In addition to including the AmeriCorps logo on materials created, for members placed at affiliate sites, we also ask that you include the CWS logo on any materials that you create throughout your service term. However, it's more important that you include the AmeriCorps logo over the CWS logo on any materials created. CWS HQ wants to tell the Refugee AmeriCorps Initiative's national service story and the impact members are making in communities nationwide. Members are highly encouraged to share their experience with the Refugee America Program Specialists for external publications on for external publications like CWS's online blog, social media posts, newsletters, etc. You are asked to submit at least one blog entry during the term of service, and you will be required to submit one story sharing the impact of your service for grant purposes. This story can be a submitted blog post. At minimum, each Refugee AmeriCorps member will share with the Refugee AmeriCorps Program Specialist a headshot and biography for CWS's internal newsletter. 
Furthermore, as part of the AmeriCorps program, it's important that you engage in what is called days of service. CWS is asking that each Refugee AmeriCorps member organize a day of service around World Refugee Day, which takes place every year on June 20th. Days of service is where AmeriCorps members engage the local community in volunteer and service opportunities around a specific topic and or critical community need. Days of service are an opportunity, is an opportunity to engage the local community and to encourage their volunteerism in refugee resettlement. As previously mentioned, days of service, we are encouraging members to have their day of service on World Refugee Day, which takes place on June 20th. Further guidance on days of service will be provided to members, or if you have any questions, you can reach out to the Refugee AmeriCorps Program Specialist. And finally, Refugee AmeriCorps members should not engage in interviews in an official capacity with the media without consulting CWS HQ first. If you are contacted for an interview, please do not proceed. And lastly, when regards to the National Service story, please reference the Member Toolkit for additional guidance on social media and other communication policies. As I'm sure you've heard throughout the time and during your onboarding into the Refugee AmeriCorps Initiative, there are pro several prohibited activities that you cannot perform. These prohibited activities are written into federal law and are covered under federal legislation in the, in the uh, National Service Act of 1990. To ensure the integrity of the program and that members remain committed to their service goal, the following activities cannot, the following activities are prohibited. Violations of the prohibited activities can result in termination from the Refugee AmeriCorps initiative. Please listen closely. At no time may Refugee AmeriCorps members engage in any activity that is illegal under local, state, or federal law. Engage in activities that pose a significant safety risk to others. Engage in AmeriCorps prohibited activities specified in the regulations 2520.65 or Section 5D2E of the AmeriCorps provisions, including attempting to influence legislation, organizing or engaging in protests, petitions, boycotts, or strikes, assisting, promoting, or deterring union organizing, impairing existing service agreements for services or collective bargaining agreements, engaging in partisan political activities or other activities designed to influence the outcome of an election to any public office, participating in or endorsing events or activities that are likely to include advocacy for or against political parties, political platforms, political candidates, proposed legislation, or elected officials, engaging in religious instruction, conducting worship services, providing instruction as part of a program that includes mandatory religious instruction or worship, constructing or operating facilities devoted to religious instruction or worship, maintaining facilities primarily or inherently devoted to religious instruction or worship, or engaging in any form of religious proselytization. Providing a direct benefit to a business organization for profit, a labor union, a partisan political organization, a nonprofit organization that fails to comply with the restrictions contained in Section 501c3 of the Internal Revenue Code of 1986, or an organization engaged in the religious activities described above unless grant funds are not used to support the religious activities. Conducting a voter registration drive or using grant funds to conduct a voter registration drive. Providing abortion services or referrals for receipt of such services. Raising funds for living allowances or for an organizational's general as opposed to project operating expenses or endowment. Writing a grant application to the corporation for national and community service or to any other federal agency. AmeriCorps members may not engage in the above activities directly or indirectly by recruiting, training, or managing others for the primary purpose of engaging in one of the activities listed above. Individuals may exercise their right as private citizens and may participate in the activities listed above on their own initiative on non-AmeriCorps time and using non-CNCS funds. 
Individuals should not wear the AmeriCorps or CWS logo while doing so. If a member and or operating site questions whether a member activity violates the above list of prohibited activities, the member and or supervisor should read out, reach out to the Refugee AmeriCorps Program Specialist before engaging in such activities. To review the full list of prohibited activities, please reference the Refugee AmeriCorps Member Toolkit where you'll find these activities listed in detail. It is important that we all manage our expectations of each other in the Refugee AmeriCorps initiative. As a Refugee AmeriCorps member, you are expected to at all times comply with the rules and standards of the local operating site, demonstrate mutual respect towards others, follow directions, policies, and procedures of the program, have a neat and clean appearance and wear appropriate attire, including, the, including AmeriCorps gear at all times. Direct concerns and problems to CWS HQ in an appropriate manner. Keep the program informed of your schedule and activities during service hours. Be responsive and communicative with fellow colleagues, CWS HQ, and your local site. Keep proprietary information strictly confidential, consistent with state and federal laws. Furthermore, as a Refugee AmeriCorps member, you can expect the following from CWS HQ and, of course, the Refugee AmeriCorps Program Specialist. Responsive, clear, and direct communication. The Refugee AmeriCorps Program Specialist will do her best to respond to all emails within a 48 to 72 hour period. If you are unable to get a hold of the Refugee AmeriCorps Program Specialist via email, please give her a call as often she can be bogged down with lots of emails and questions for operating sites, members, and of course, fellow colleagues. You can expect the Refugee AmeriCorps Program Specialist to provide a supportive and friendly environment to thrive. You can expect training and professional development opportunities. You can expect to have quarterly check-in calls. And you can expect monthly follow-up regarding progress towards program object objectives. Thank you so much for listening to today's training. If you have any further questions, please address those in the accompanying uh, quiz that is below this training in the new, or new member orientation e-module. Thank you so very much and have a wonderful day.